Hello, friends. It is Link, the Gulf Coast Gardener. Today is Thursday, June the 13th, but I will be at the Galveston's own Farmer's Market on Sunday, June the 16th from 9 a.m. until 12 noon, and I will have a whole lot of great stuff. So let's take a look at what I will have at the market on Sunday. One of my favorite things to grow is basil, and I'll have three varieties on Sunday. Now, the first variety is Petra Purple Basil. I love this basil. It may be my favorite variety. It is just like our traditional basil. It's just more beautiful, in my opinion. You can grow it strictly as an ornamental if you want, because it has the most beautiful blue-purple flowers, but you can also use it in cooking. I love Petra Purple Basil. And down below, this is globe basil. This is perfect if you have limited space and you want to grow basil in a container. Uh, the leaves don't get too big. It makes this nice round plant, which is perfect for containers. You, of course, you can still put it in your garden, but globe basil is a winner. Back here, this is lime basil. If you've never smelled lime basil, you need to stop by uh, the market and give it a try. It smells amazing. It smells like basil. It smells like lime. It will really give your basil dishes uh, something unusual with a little kick of lime. In the back, this is a giant oregano plant. I have one or two of these, and this is oregano supreme. This is known as the best culinary variety of oregano that you can grow. Uh, but if you want one of these big plants, get to the market early. And I'll have quite a few of the smaller ones. Now, this is Greek oregano, more of a classic oregano. Um, that I start from seed every year, and I've got a whole flat of these. So if you miss out on the Oregano Supreme, I'll have plenty of the smaller, classic Greek oregano. Now, what would any kitchen be without time? This is your classic German winter time. I'll have two of these large plants. So again, get to the market early if you want to get your hands on some time. These guys are fantastic. More herbs. Check out the peppermint. I'll have some gallon-sized peppermints, um, maybe two or three, and I'll also have three or four of the smaller peppermints. These guys are fantastic. Once you get them established, they're super easy to propagate. I'll show you how to do it at the market. In the back, this is a Mexican oleander. This is a perennial, a flowering perennial, that has the most gorgeous peach-colored flowers you've ever seen. Absolutely love Mexican oleander. Now, it's kind of a 50-50 if it will survive the freezes here. Mine, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, if you grow them in a container, of course, you can always just roll it into the garage or into some covered area, and they should do just fine. Now, once they start flowering, they will start producing a ton of seed, and then you can start your own just like I do. I have literally started two or 300 plants all from the seed of my original plant. Now, in the back, more herbs. This is rosemary. Now, I've got two or three in these really nice clay pots. If you don't want to mess with potting up your own plants or you just want something that's ready to go, I'll have some of these rosemary plants ready to be dropped right on your deck or in your favorite spot. And I will have some of these gallon rosemaries as well. If you want to transplant them, put them in your yard, put them in your garden, or put them in your own container. Now, I'll have some more perennials. Check these guys out. This is a native perennial. If you're interested in supporting the local beneficial insects, uh, and critters. I'll have two violets, but only two in these gallon containers. So get there early if you want to get your hands on a violet. Now, violets support all of the local wildlife. The rabbits like to nibble on them. It even supports two types of fritillary butterfly. I honestly don't know if they're native to our area, but if you want to start planting more native plants, violets are a great place to start. And I'll put a picture uh, of my violet patch. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Once you get them established, um, they really are no muss, no fuss. Put them on the east side of your house so they get some afternoon shade and check the box. And also, what also looks really good with violets is this red salvia. This is scarlet sage. Um, I believe it's the only Texas native salvia, and it is absolutely beautiful. I love growing salvia. Victoria Blue is really my favorite, and this year I'm growing this scarlet sage or red salvia. Um, I'll put a picture up as well. Um, I'm growing with the violets. They make a fantastic one-two combo, red salvia and violets. And another uh, perennial for you, also a native. This is native to southeastern United States, actually eastern United States, and Texas is included. This is mist flower. It makes the most gorgeous purple flowers. These plants are beautiful, and this is probably the butterfly's favorite plant. When it's in flowering, the butterflies flock to it. So I'll have some of these larger gallon plants. I'll also have a handful of these smaller 
uh, four inch pots. So if you want the smaller ones, get there early. As a matter of fact, get there early um, if you're interested in any or all of these because I have a limited supply of a few of them and a lot of the others. So, um, and one more, one more flowering um, perennial for you. This is Mexican petunia. You'll see these at the garden centers pretty regularly. Uh, they're very common, but you know what? I love them. I'll put a picture of my giant petunia bush uh, over on the west side of the house. It is in full flower, absolutely beautiful, loves the heat, comes back from a freeze every year. Now, some people think this is kind of a crazy, aggressive, borderline invasive plant, and it can be if you don't keep it under control. I keep mine dug up around the edges. I pull it up by the roots where I don't want it, and in my opinion, it's not that hard to control, but be aware there will be some you know, annual maintenance to keep your Mexican petunia in check. And one final thing, check these beauties out. I will have patio choice yellow cherry tomatoes. I sell a lot of these plants in the spring and it is one of my favorite cherry tomatoes. I should have six or seven or eight pints. I'm not exactly sure how many, but I will have some cherry tomatoes for you as well. So anyway, that's a wrap up of what we'll have at the farmer's market on Sunday. Be sure to get there early if you want the best selection. I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day.